Good evening, Pio Nation. Hope you're having a great Thursday. My name is Matt Williamson. And I'm Vincent Anderson. And you are watching Married to College Esports. So tonight, we have not one, but we have two matches tonight. So in a couple of minutes, we will have our Overwatch team go up against Brian and Stratton College uh, as part of the NACE uh, Overwatch Fall Cup. And then immediately following that, uh, we'll be broadcasting our Rainbow Six match against Ohio State University. Uh, I was not aware we were going to actually play Ohio State uh, er until earlier today. So think of it as just kind of like a two-for-one deal. You came for one game, and you're going to be here for two. Well, at least hope you, hopefully you will stay uh, for the uh, the second game. So it should be uh, a pretty exciting evening. Maybe a long evening, but it's going to be an exciting evening for sure. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how our white team performs mm -hmm. for this match. Yeah. All right, so while we're waiting to get things uh, set up, we'll go ahead and go over the roster for the overwatch team and i know not everyone there is going to be playing i believe tonight we'll have freshman tyler salonitra azadale as tank uh freshman quentin shields questionably will be playing i believe uh junior morgan white poseidon will be playing don't know if it'll be support or uh dps we've had kind of kind of play a little bit of musical chairs with some of the roles but it's been working out so far for the pioneers uh, we'll be having freshman Haley Newman, Azura, uh, also playing. Now, sophomore Vincent Anderson Caps Lock's not playing because he's here commentating for us, but yep. we'll we'll bring him in if we we need him. Uh, freshman Mason, Mason Flatch, uh, Harmful Hades, will be playing tonight. And senior Manning Shaw, Granny Sunade, uh, will also be playing. So I believe that's everyone that will be on uh, tonight here. Uh, right now, the main thing we're waiting for is just got to get some contact information from the other team. So once we know at least one person from there, uh, we can get things started up. And hopefully this time the uh, the team will invite us to the lobby so we can actually watch the match for a change. <laughs> that would uh, be nice. A no, little mishap uh, last time. Uh, while we're waiting for that as well, we'll go over a couple of quick announcements. Uh, so as we've been mentioning all week, uh, we have started up a poll for what would be the next Twitch emote. Uh, because of your subs, we've been able to unlock another emote. Uh, but we haven't decided which one we want yet, so you get to make that decision. So do you want Pio Rage, Pio Thump, Pio Law, or Pio S? Uh, the link is provided below that you can uh, go to to make your selection. The, uh, let's see, okay, I'm getting added to the lobby here. Cool. Um, and now that's creating the game, so we should be able to uh, get that set up. So I'm going to do a quick message to the other team. Um, so we can invite. Okay, give me one second here. Okay, we're just trying to get a name so we can invite to the lobby because we already have the lobby created. Um, so we should be getting that up and going very soon. But uh, while we're you can go to the link here to decide. Um, Yeah, they can decide which e you want. I believe last time I checked, Pio Thump was actually winning. Mm -hmm. So if you want Pio Thump to win, then be sure to uh, put your vote in. But if you want something else to win, also be sure to put a vote in. Uh, then also, I'm going to pull this up. Uh, kind of do multiple things here at the same time. Yeah, so we're going to make sure we get everything set up here. So while we have uh, this up, uh, we are in the middle of a campaign where we're trying to raise funds to help support our athletics department. Uh, it is a campus-wide uh, campaign where we are trying to do a virtual sellout of Don Drum Stadium. So the goal is to raise $25,000 by homecoming, which is October 17th. Uh, so you can go to bit.ly slash virtual sellout. That is my personal advocate link, by the way. I would just full disclosure that it... Uh, it is my link that you can click on to donate. Uh, for every $5 do donated, it counts towards a ticket for the virtual sellout. And when you make your donation, you can actually designate one of the athletic teams and they will receive half of your donation. Esports is one of those athletic teams. So let's say you donate 20, uh, let's say you donate $20 and you designate esports as your designated team. Well, half of the $10 will go towards esports. And the other uh, $10 will go to the Pioneer Club, which is uh, designed to support all athletics. And there is a little competition 
where whichever team raises the most funds will receive an additional thousand dollars for their team. Now we have an uphill battle ahead of us. Mm-hmm. I think men's crew has like thousands of dollars donated. <laughs> I bet, so, yeah. so are we gonna win that? Probably not. But you can help us get a fighting chance. And by doing so, you are directly supporting the esports program because half of your give goes directly to us that we can use to help with building our facility, supporting our students. We've done quite a few things here to help with expanding our program by trying to add more teams, be able to uh, provide programming for our students, whether it's academic success uh, or even uh, helping with mental resiliency courses. We've been doing quite a few things for our, our students, so your support is uh, greatly appreciated. So please be sure to go to bit.ly slash virtual sellout to make your gift. It has to be completed before October 17th at noon. Now, I believe that is all the announcements because we are getting everyone invited to the lobby. So we are just very close to starting up this best of five series against Brighton and Bryant and Stratton College. I keep saying it right, but with the mask, it makes it feel like I'm saying Brian in Stratton yeah. College. It's not Brian, it's Bryant. <laughs> I have to learn to enunciate. Um, but anyway, so the first map is going to be on Ilios. Here, get that on. There we go. Yeah, so the, so the first map uh, will be Ilios. And then after that, I know there's like designated map pools, whether it's like hybrid or assault. I can't remember which one's which. But that's why I have my coach taking care of it, and Vince and I are here just commentating. So we're just here for the, the joy of the ride. One of the best things to do during one of these matches, I will say. Just being able to, to call out the plays and just see everything that's going on, it's, it's really enjoyable. I'm mm-hmm. glad to do it. So we'll see exactly how they perform. <clears throat> and I, I will say that uh, for this match, I, I expect Marietta is going to have to be able to, again, make sure that their composition is wor- working. Make sure that they can change it or make sure they can just switch up their play style effectively the more quickly they can do that and the more effectively they can do that it's it's going to be the easier the win will become mm-hmm. so i'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out we have some different players as as we as we normally do or just we have some we have some players that have played in earlier matches that are playing now so composition is a little bit different but we still should expect the same amount of effort that's put in by all of our players so i'd say that for the most part, we're going to see a little bit of different play style, most likely, since there's whole different players. But we'll still see the, st- the same kind of uh, same kind of way that Marietta plays. And I'm just interested to see how how Bryant and Stratton perform against it. Yeah. So right now, I think we're just waiting for one more person from Bryant and Stratton. Um, so apparently, some of the players have had some uh, connection issues um, for a, a variety of reasons. At least that's what we're reading in the chat. Uh, so we should be getting the next person in here um, very soon. So once that's uh, once that's set up, uh, then we will have uh, game one uh, underway. So right now we're just kind of playing the, the waiting game for now, but um, shouldn't be too much longer. All right, I'm going to put the poll back up for the emotes. So that way, if you want to take this time right now to put in your votes for which emote you would like to use on our Twitch channel, and even if you're not going to use the emotes, you can still decide what everyone else gets to use. Yeah, it's and, and I'm also excited to see like if in the future we grow even more and we unlock another emote that we can get another one of these onto uh, onto the channel. So if, if yours doesn't win, it still could potentially come in the future. So we can uh, so also your vote counts towards that as well. Exactly. Yeah. The these will be the next four emotes we put out. It's just what is that order? So mm-hmm. you get to choose the first one and whichever had the second place votes, that'll be the the second one that we put out and so forth. Or if we get a couple more subs, then the, the first, the top two will get uh, unlocked right away. All right, looks like everyone is ready. The the, uh, the sixth person for Brighton and Stratton is here. So as soon as we get the right overlay, so as soon as everyone says go and we get started, we will get this game underway. Do you think that uh, if Pile Wall and Pile S, who, who were like tied for a little bit, if they become tied, for the final results, do you think you would do a separate poll for the set for the next emote whenever it comes around to see which one between those would win? Well, that's a very good question. I don't know. That'd be I'm pretty interesting. I don't but, know if I'll do a separate poll or if we'll just flip a coin or maybe we'll just do a straw poll with the Twitch chat at the time of whenever we decide to do that. That would be exciting. Yeah, that would be fun. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so Brighton Stratton's almost ready. Just a couple of ready checks are coming out. So as soon as we get that going, in fact, we'll just go ahead and get to the lobby here so you can see that we do have the lobby created. And it's just a matter of uh, waiting for things to go. Marietta will be on the blue side. And it looks like Cryo just said that he was ready. Yep, so. they, they are now saying they're ready. I think Cryo is their captain. If yep. I remember correctly, looks like we have on side uh, Kakashi, Pluip, uh, Cryo, uh, and uh, as well as Ace of Spades mm -hmm. and uh, Mago. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm just gonna just say Mag uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Endcraft 5000, and yeah, that should be that should be the whole team for Bryant and. Uh, We'll see how they perform. This is the very first map we'll be going to. One of my favorites with the giant well. We'll see how this is going to go for Marietta as well as uh, Brian Stratton. We will see exactly how they'll perform, how they'll utilize the environment, because the environment is frequently utilized on this map. There's a lot of people trying to get boops off, and as well as people that encounter that maneuver with multiple mobility potentials, pot potential, you know, Things that they can do. Lucio wall riding, Echo just flying away, or Farah. A lot of people. I've seen a lot of teams, instead of playing a boop heavy meta, they just play a lot of anti boop heroes so that way they can't get thrown off. So, like, that's what I've seen a lot of people use. Although we do see Lucio on both sides, so they are maybe looking for some boops. I, yeah, it'd be pretty fun to see that if, uh, if they, they get a multi kill just straight from environmental. So, um,. You'll see Marietta is going to be taking far left, or not far, far left, I'd say mid left, going to the first to left doorway to try and get some, uh, some little bit of a flank control, just trying to close in right onto Brian Stratton. There's the initial pick from Cuse with another fire strike kill of his right onto Brian's Lucio. That's going to be Endcraft 5000 down initially. It's going to be initial pick, as well as he winning his mirror match against Mace of Spades. That's going to be two picks, and as well as the side and getting Doomfist charge kill, and Green Snotty getting the anti nade kill straight on the Sombra, and Azura getting a kill right into the Reaper. Sign finishing it off with the Roadhog. That's going to be a, a lost team fight initially. Great start from Marietta. And now it is time for Brian Stratton to realize their mistakes, recuperate, adapt, overcome. So we'll see exactly what they'll be able to do. That was a great first start from Marietta. And we'll we'll just see how this is gonna go. Yeah, Brian Stratton was trying to go for some plays like with the Rohawk to hook through the uh the middle, but that did not occur. Marietta was able to get the tanks down. Was, but Poseidon does fall, so that might give Brian Stratton what they need to push through. And there's a huge anti onto both the Hog and the Rhine for Brian Stratton. The Hog is nearly one that he's going to use his breather immediately, as what the fuck he's going to do. But that's not really going to matter as Granny Snotty takes out. Actually, there's going to be the environmental kill and Endcraft getting right back at his mirror match. It's going to be a huge lost team fight. That environmental kill, again, there's the boop from, from Brian and Stratton's Lucio. They have two boop like characters essentially. Well, they have the Hog, which can hook him off. They have the Lucio, which can bounce them off with his uh, with his sound wave, and um, that's those are two main characters you'll see using those environmental potentials. Devo, yeah, she can bounce people around when she's charging forward, but you don't see it that often. The only one you really see is a Lucio trying to get that off. So um, it looks like Ryan's trying to utilize the environment a lot more and heavily rely on it. We're gonna see a massive uh, Nano straight onto. Ryan. The, hook, the, the hog does manage to hook the Rhine, but he hooks him too far over to the other side. And there's going to be Azadale's, uh There's there's a hack bomb coming out right there. But there's going to be a double death blossom. However, uh, the picks are still Marietta's favor. Three picks on either side, and then one pick going for Marietta's favor for Alan Azadale. It's going to be a one team fight, just barely as three of Marietta are taken out. That was a very close team fight. Lots of deaths exchanged, but Azadale's going to get an extra kill onto one of their supports, the Moira Kakashi. For Brian Stratton's down, that's going to be a huge disadvantage, an opening pick, and it's going to cause Brian Stratton to be a little, uh, to be a little staggered for a little while. But Ryan's still at half health, so he's not going to really just push something initially. He's going to need a little bit more heals, and he's going to be able to push with his team and get it initially out. We do see that there could be potential somber front flank by Brian Stratton to see if there's going to be an EMP or something along those lines. Actually, no, no EMP. She's yeah. nowhere near that. She already um, burned it earlier. Yeah, there's, as, as you can see, the, uh, there's, oh yeah, because that, that was his, yeah. My bad. That was actually correct. Um, 
they're gonna see uh, Poseidon gets a little extra kill onto Lucio, uh, and Craft as well as Poop getting his kill onto his mirror map, and Asgill getting his off tank kill straight onto Mace of Spades. And we're going to see that there's Asdale's Diva trying to get a little extra kill. He's going to provide space, but not going to get any picks off. There is going to be a double kill onto the, onto the Hog, as well as the Reaper. And the environmental kill, or not environmental kill, just the sound the sound wave kill uh, from Azura onto Moira. And we're going to see that uh, yeah. it's going to be a pretty highly contested uh, highly contested point holder. Reaper's going to try and get something off. And Poseidon does fall to another environmental kill. However, we're going to see Lucio use his beat for it to help Marietta stay alive for a little bit longer. There's going to be the beam coming out, but beautifully slept by Granny Sonata, and it cancels the entirety of his ult. However, Q is booped off of the map, but he's count and, and or yeah, Q is booped off the map, and then Azura melee kills the Roadhog, and then it looks like Azura's just trying to stay alive with her Lucio, trying to figure out if she's just able to just stay on the point, contest it for as long as she possibly can. Again, if, if Mary loses this, it's not that big of a deal because the game isn't over. Because uh, Brian Stratton still has a long percentage to go. However, if they take this, they win the map, which is why they're trying so desperately hard to just get a hold of it. I guess like Brian Strat has done a very good job with keep contesting the map and keeping someone on play, and yeah. Marietta is having trouble cleaning yeah. up. Marietta is switching to stagger characters. He, as as he does try to switch to the ball, but he's immediately countered by the Sombra. Sombra burns for EMP, and harmful hits gets the kill onto the onto the line. However, the environmental kill straight on Marietta's Reaper, as well as Azura getting a kill straight onto Brian Stratton's Reaper. Poseidon getting his uh, alt kill onto Lucio, a double kill onto uh, Moira. That's both supports for Brian Stratton down. That might as well be a one-two fight. And then it's the first sight point for Marietta. Very well done. I thought it was, I was going to say like, you know, if they have to, just just lose. You can lose the team fight, recuperate, get your ults back together, and just go for it. But they held on to it. As they switched to ball just to hold on to the point, they just wanted to take it there. They didn't care. They, they were like, yeah, we could have lost that team fight. We could have just lost it and walked back. But we saw an opportunity. We just held on to it, and that's exactly what they did. Even though they had more than enough potential to just fall off, they didn't care. They just went for it. No, that shows a lot of confidence by Marietta that they just want to, they don't want to play safe, they just want to get it done. And that's exactly what they did. <laughs> We're going to see the next map coming out. We're going to see that Cry is going to switch to a Hanzo, as well as, I believe that's actually, and we're going to see a Zarya as opposed to a Hog. Normal pick, because obviously there's no well in the middle of the map anymore. And plus, uh, Zarya is going to be a highly more uh, meta pick for, uh, for Brian Stratton's side. Besides, on his Widow, you probably see a triple kill from him. Uh, this map is pretty nice for Widow, and we'll see how this is going to go for the rest of the map, as well as Harmful Hades switching off his Reaper and going right onto Junkrat. You can provide some good uh, fire from uh, uh, far up in the back line. You can just shoot your grenades into the enemy team. It can be pretty effective. A pretty good uh, stream of damage it can be done. And we're going to be seeing that the objective is initially going to be captured by Marietta, as Marietta has just pushed the entirety of, uh, of Brian and Stratton back. No, no picks have been exchanged, however, Zarya was incredibly low on HP, which caused her to fall back, and Poseidon finishes her off, as well as the rest of Brian and Stratton are forced to fall back, as they do have an initial pick um, on them. So, like, they have to fall back just to get their tanks back. They can't go into a fight with a 5v6, you're gonna lose that. And you see that Poseidon's just applying damage to the Ryan. Although Ryan isn't dead, he's at half HP, and he's incredibly killable because of how big of a target he is. He's already incredibly low right here. He's gonna try and figure out a way to just keep himself alive. He doesn't want to die, but he's gonna have to by Azadale, because Azadale's on Zarya. You're gonna die when he's on that character. And as you can see, the Hanzo's incredibly low. He's gonna have to fall back, and you know, that's gonna be another lost team fight. They just can't go into fights where they don't have a teammate, and it's uneven. It's just it's just really, really difficult to bring that back unless you get a really fast pick onto them. Poseidon finishing off the Hanzo. Hanzo cannot snipe Poseidon for the most part, for this fight at least. And we're gonna see that's gonna be another initial pick. And Brian Stratton is falling back. Yeah, it's very that has them very well pinned, but they're gonna start falling back because they do not want to see nine the uh, the point. But they're not letting Brian Stratton take any rep. And now we're seeing them pull all the alts in, but nice grab by Azadale to slow that progress. That was really well done. That's that's both beats burned. However, a Grand Stratton gets an amazing uh, anti straight on to Brian Stratton. It's gonna be a lot of picks off, mainly due to that. Um, that was really well done. So we saw the Moira beam come out. I don't know if the Moira just used her beam or if she was slept 
but it seemed like it was a shorter duration than normal. She How popped it early on, I think. Oh, yeah, I think she popped it early on. That must have been what it was. We saw the Grav come out. So they countered the Moira Beam with Grav as well as there was two beats that came out from either side. And it, it, overall, the fight was just won by Marietta. And a huge anti by uh, Granny Sunata there while they were grouped up. That was very and low. That, I was able to get Ryan very low. Mm -hmm. So now we see the points getting very close to see if uh, Ryan Shot's going to try to contest. Hanzo's going to try to get over there. Hades gets the double kill straight onto both Endcraft and Mag, but then Asna's gonna finish off the main tank. But as well, Hula comes back with a Blossom killing both Poseidon and Granny Sonata and Cryo killing uh, one of Marietta's DPS, the Junkrat. However, there's gonna be a, a double kill uh, from Q as well as a kill from Asdale on one of the healers, Kakashi. That's going, this is this is just picks going back and forth and back and forth, winnable for either sides, as you can see. Um, Mag has switched straight to a, a stall character, but he is anti and he has to worry about that. The dragons are going to be a little bit scared from Marietta. There's going to be a lot of area denial. Unless he makes his base to get a charge kill on the Azura. There's Azadil's grab, providing a little bit of uh, comfort for the team. Q is going to kill his mirror match, and as well as Mag just trying to get some sort of contesting onto the point. He's going to try and figure out a way to just stop them from capturing it. If they lose this, they lose the map. They have to make sure that this does not happen. As you can see, Poseidon gets the kill straight on the Mag. There's no more stall for him. Endcraft getting the kill right onto the Rhine. That's going to be queued down for a little while. Azadale getting his kill into the Moira again. Poseidon finishing off the Hanzo. That's not going to be looking good for them. Harmful Hades on the Soldier getting his kill straight on the Fluid. Azura killing her mirror match. This is such a highly contested map right now. Poseidon getting the Rhine. Pioneers win the map. Very well done by either side. That was so enjoyable to watch and commentate. That was so well done. And Brian Stratton, they held very well to be able to get back, but Mario was able to finish him off uh, enough to be able to secure uh, both of those rounds. Oh, yeah, I, it looks like Asdale was most likely, yeah, he, he most likely was out of boost at that point, and then the Ryan, although his shield was blocking the uh, the pushback effect of that uh, hog alt, if you if so much as a little bit of you touches that you're gonna be pushed back and that was just enough for the Ryan to be booped straight off into the the well. And again, I was very surprised at the end of that, um uh Harmful Hades went straight onto the soldier and I, and, and that's a pick that I have never seen by Marietta, but he gets the kills off, so it doesn't matter. I was very well done. Alright, so with that Marietta takes game one. This is a best of five, so Marietta has to win two more uh to secure the uh, the whole match. So I think now we're just getting back to the lobby and trying to uh, figure out what the next uh, map will be. So just waiting to see uh, what they're going to go with. Hasn't been a whole lot of discussion yet. But I wouldn't think it'll take too long. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, yeah. Uh, looks like the next map will be Dorado. That sounds good. I love I love Dorado. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty fun map. We're just gonna wait for the ready checks. I don't even think we're gonna take a break. I think we're just gonna be starting up very very soon. Maybe. And yeah, with Dorado, you know, as soon as you get out of that gate, you start pushing that cart. I'm gonna be very interested to see. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure who's gonna be on offense uh, for this game, but I but I'm very interested to see how they pull it off because. I I think we determined last yeah. time the red team is offense yeah. first. Red, red team is just probably going to be offensive first, I think. And, yeah, and I would think Marietta would want that because what it does for them is if they get a good stop, then they know what they need to win the, the uh, that game, mm -hmm. that map, I should say. Yeah. They just All they got to do is just burn time, keep the cart from, from getting to as many points as possible, switch sides, do the same thing, but actually push the cart. And we'll Let's see how they perform for that. I think Maria is going to be over here. I'm just waiting for them to pop up. Ready for battle. Where are they? Oh, wait, I forgot. They, they don't spawn here. They spawn over here. Oh, yeah, that's the... Not, that, that's me with the big brain. Oh yeah, it was the that's the, I, I was thinking about that spawn too because I'm like yeah, isn't that usually a but now I uh, there they are there we go yeah my bad so see are they gonna they out. got the jump right up here see if they have anything set up over here yep they're going to they got the Reinhardt it looks like we're gonna see yeah Azadil sticking on the Diva Diva again one of my favorite characters to play as well uh, her ultimate is so satisfying to to pull stuff off with it's 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 really fun 
use. We'll see that uh, Ryan will probably be holding this high ground right here with the shield as he's going to be trying to get some antis and sleeps from afar, which will aid uh, Marietta and just get them a lot of easy picks off, especially if there's a huge anti like there was last game. I feel like this is a game of uh, tower defense, just the way Mary is positioned. And an early pick by Poseidon, although he's going to get picked too. It's a yeah. one for one trade. The Genji dashes straight into his face, takes him out. Asgio does get a refrag back onto the Widow. However, the Moira is going to be revived by Endcraft, who is going to be playing on the, on the Mercy. Now, they have no res, so uh, Ryan Strand has to account for that. So Mercy is going to have a little bit less effectiveness currently. Diva is antied on. Uh, Brian is Stratton's side. The mags will just shake that off a little bit. Nothing's actually going to happen to him. We're going to see Mir uh, Mirita Fort defending the initial corner. And we will... I I'm very uh, I'm very interested to see how this goes. Like I say that all the time, but uh, seeing this at a highly competitive level, it's really cool to see how exactly each pick can go. As you can see, it's just a lot of skirmishes right now. Mirita is was going a little bit low on the HP, but as you can see, Mace of Spades is getting pretty low as well as the Diva's about to be out of the back. But again, it's just all these like exchanges of damage. It's the picks that once they go off, it's just this huge, huge uh, cluster of happenings. And as you can see, the Hanzo gets the initial pick. Hanzo Poseidon with his uh, wonderful ability that he has to spam arrows. And we will see that it's going to be an initial pick uh, against Marietta. And it looks like the sign has switched off the Widow and he's going on to the Doom Fist. The Diva Bomb does buy Marriott a little bit of time. It forces them to worry about the Diva Bomb and only the Diva Bomb. And again, Q gets the kill on his mirror match. Kulip gets the kill on the Q. However, Asgill gets the kill on the Genji. But then Mag gets the kill on to the Azura. As well as the Rez goes straight on the Mace of Spades. There's going to be Mag kill straight on the Granny Sonate. Azadale does eat the dragons. That's a very well done eat by uh, by Azadale. He, that's a whole alt canceled out. That's going to be very, very well done by Azadale. That's that, uh, Diva's uh, uh, defense matrix is so powerful. So she can eat Zarya Grav. She can eat uh, the Hanzo ults like you've seen. She can eat uh, uh, May alts. She can eat so many different things like that. We're going to see multiple picks exchange. We're going to see Poseidon getting his charge punch as well as just a double kill. Right from Brian Stratton. Power kill for Humble Hades as well as an extra C4 kill onto Cryo. It's going to be a lost team fight for Brian and Stratton just before the point they need to get to is achieved. And that's going to be another reset for them. One minute, 20 seconds left on the clock. We'll see how that'll go for the rest of the time. If they are able to, if the Bobcats are able to get to the point initially. Very well done. Uh, and that was just a, a great exchange of blows right there. Like it was, it was crazy just to see. Like it's always crazy to see when Diva eats and all like that. Yep. One minute remains, so Brian Stratton's going to have to make a move. They only have a a, uh, a shatter available right now. Although uh, Mercy's all just about ready to kick in, but they're going to have to do something if they're going to want to uh, take the first checkpoint. We do hear the shatter come down, and I couldn't tell if it really connected with anyone. I did. Yeah. I did oh wait, that was questionably shatter, not. Yeah. Uh, Mace of Spades, but Mace of Spades is dead. That is going to be his mirror match right there. Asgill's going to get his mirror match out of Mech. That's going to be very, very well done. Poseidon gets his alt kill onto one of the healers, as well as Cryo, one of the DPS, and their other healer, Mercy, and Craft being taken out. Mace of Spades getting a little refrag on Poseidon, but as long as they have no healers, it's going to be a little difficult for them to push up on a lot of stuff. You're going to have to wait for them to miss their spawn as they have. And we're going to see how this performs. There's the May Wall coming out straight from Brian Stratton, broken down immediately by Vinny Rietta. Right. And then we're going to see the Bomb come out from Azadale getting a double kill, not only onto the May, but on Moira from his ult. That's going to be the first round complete. Marietta was able to just keep them off the point. And Brian and Stratton wasn't even able to touch. And if they're not able to touch within the last three seconds, I believe, they're not going to be able to... Uh, to get into overtime. Yeah, so a very good defense there by the pioneers because we see where the payload is. So Marietta just has to get a little bit farther. Basically, if they secure the, the checkpoint, they will take the game. So that puts them in really good position to to take this. Yeah, that's that's just very very well done. Like I, I was surprised. Like there were, uh, like when they were going around that first corner, the Bobcats were they were, they were trying. They they got a lot of stuff off. They got a lot of picks off. And then they were able to push forward a little bit, but then Marietta just came right back. And like again, 
with with Asdale just eating those dragons. Like it was, it's an incredible just alt canceler. I think they just get they're getting the right picks. They're able to take out their supports early on, and when you take out the healers, it's just really easy to pick off the remaining uh, members yeah. of Brian Stratton. The healer might not be the easiest or, or might not be the most fun role to play, but it is one of the most integral roles in the game because when you're without them, it's basically impossible to do a lot of things mm -hmm. because you have nothing to help you sustain any damage. That's, that's again, we're going to see Cryo actually picking the soldier. We'll see how that performs for him. Gets a little bit of aimbot in there. See how he can perform with his alt. We're going to see Plouffe still on the May. Her walls are going to be pretty effective for buying space and just getting rid of sight lines that they don't want. And, uh, and Craft staying on his mercy and Mace Spades and Mag staying on the Ryan Diva, respectively. We're going to see that the mercy could easily just get a pocket off on her other teammate. She is going to be, um, trying to just hold, again, the entirety of the Valkast just holding right on this high ground right here. Asdale is going to be on the monkey, going to be trying to use his primal later on, most likely to just, um, Throw around the enemy team, displace them, and we're going to see Q get straight past the first arch. And there's going to be a big anti directly on two. I believe that is that's going to, there's going to be an anti and a hack right on two Mace of State. That that's got to hurt for him. That was probably not an enjoyable experience. As Azale finishing off the May for Ryan Stratton. Yeah, Mercy does get the heal off, but there's going to be so many picks to change right there. Yeah, I mean, the hack and the uh, the anti really just make sure they couldn't take out the right. And the point is, they're already very close to the point. That was a... That, that might as well be a lost team fight. That's got to be a destination. And first. a lost map. There we go. That's... That was crazy. That yeah, was... It's just a very strong win there by the Pioneers. That was so well done. Like, I'm very impressed by that. And again, like, like how I said, like... When when you don't get the well, like when you don't get the point that far, you don't have far to go when you're on offense. And one so much as one team fight one, as soon as they got past that first corner, it was just really simple. Once that point goes on, there's going to be yeah. This play was very well done uh, by the side because he was able to just get rid of one with his alt. Which again, if you solo alt someone, it's fine with Doomfist. The alt is pretty difficult to get multi kills with just because of how easy people can just move away from it. So. Very well Excellent. done by Marietta. Yep. So with that, we're at match point. Um, so I think Marietta's going to take just a, a small break. Uh, I think they've learned some lessons from their um, from their match from Saturday against Bethel, where they they were up 2-0, and they were just like, okay, let's just go right into the third game, and the they lost their focus a little bit. They didn't have they didn't really have time to really. Uh, settle down, collect their thoughts, refocus, and we saw a lot of mistakes in that game. It didn't turn out to be one of the most intense overtimes in the uh, the third round of that game. It was really enjoyable, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I think this is going to be a common strategy for Mary just to take a quick breather, just to settle things down, refocus, and then we'll get into to game three. So since they're going to take a two-minute break, We'll take a two-minute break as well. Good. So uh, we'll be back uh, in just probably less than two minutes now, but we'll take a quick breather, and we'll be right back. Uh, welcome back. That was a quick break because we've been told that Brian and Stratton has picked Eichenwald and Marietta is ready to go. I don't even think that was two minutes, but hey, that's all right. Uh, so Marietta said they're ready, so they're waiting for Brian and Stratton to be ready, and then we will have game three here. But yeah, the map will be Eichenwald. Uh, I believe Brian and Stratton will be on offense first. 
That's yeah. This is going to be the final map. I can wall really fun map. They gotta get past the initial choke under the arch, capture the point, push the cart until all of its destinations are met. Swap sides, do the same thing, and we'll see exactly how this is gonna go. I'm very interested to see what uh, the Bobcats will do to um, actually counter what Mary has been trying out. Uh, what team compositions they'll try different DPS. Uh, different DPS picks, mm -hmm. uh, potentially different uh, tank composition. I'd say. Yeah. Um, just because if they're going to be on offense, it's going to be difficult getting past that first choke. So they got to figure out something to outplay there. They got to. Um, they they got to find a way to keep yeah. their tanks up so they can just uh, pretty much assert themselves through that choke point. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that Marietta has done well so far. Is that like we saw in Dorado when they were on offense taking payload? They just moved through that first arch like it was nothing. They're just like, this is mine, I own this, and they just forced Brian and Stratton to back off. Mm -hmm. So Brian Stratton has to do the same thing to Marietta. If they want to be able to get to uh, the payload to start capturing it, they have to assert some form of dominance. And we'll see if they if, we'll see if they can do that. Yeah, and like uh, I'd say that. Um... For the most part, what Marietta has been performing well at, I'd say, is just recognizing their targets. I and that's and it's really really good because some people they'll just they'll just see red and they'll shoot and they'll see an opponent and they'll shoot. Once targets are focused and called, like yeah, when you see someone and the target hasn't been called yet, then you can just go for them. But if the target has been called and you're able to allocate all your resources to that target, that's an initial pick. That's going to be a really good advantage. When the, when, the, when the damage is spread out too much, you don't get anything done because it's being countered by healing. So, yeah. Now we do see a, a little bit of a composition change by Bright and Stratton. They're going to go with the Pharah instead of Soldier 76. So they're going to try to see if a little air support can make a difference on this map. We are going to see Kakashi going back onto his Moira and the clue of going straight into Junkrat uh, from his previous choice. So we'll see how that's going to we are going to see Poseidon on the Genji. We might see some Nano Blades as we did the last game. We're going to see a Farmer Seat. That's going to be the biggest thing coming out from uh, from Brian and Stratton. That's going to be an initial pick, however, from the KD straight onto the Kakashi. That's going to be a Res from the Mercy on the Kakashi, so it's going to counter uh, back that pick. However, Granny Tsunami is going to get an anti nade kill onto the Junkrat. It's going to be another pick that keeps Brian and Stratton from pushing forward, and that's going to cause them to have a little bit of difficulty from getting stuff done. But we do see that Marietta is respecting the the, uh, the Pharah because they right now don't have a great counter to her. We, we don't see the McCree, we don't have a soldier, we don't really have anything that can turn her down. So they're still keeping her distance while trying to do some poke, and they are getting picks one by one, and even just one pick is enough to slow down Brian and Stratton's offense. Yeah, that's very well done. Like, I, I'd say, like, again, as they he get managed to take out the far, that's really good. That's no more counter that they have to worry about. And that's just going to be super, super powerful on Marietta's, on Marietta's part, because usually the far is super hard to take down. This is being pocketed by the Mercy, being spammed by the Mercy, and usually happens. So we're going to see that Brian Stratton is still having trouble figuring out where they can just push past this. They know they have an advantage. They know that they can do something about this, but they're not going through with it yet. They have to figure out exactly what to do. There's going to be the mortar being coming out. This is going to be the far alt, however. The game is going to be a reflect off of that. And there's going to be a nano on the Q, which could have been a nano blade, or might have been misallocated, or they just wanted to nano and, and, and someone else and then blade someone different, or, or get just blades on his own. Give me the Mercy Res actually coming on straight on the Ryan. Ryan gets a three man shatter. Very well done on the shatter on the Ryan. That is incredible. Very, very well done. That was super, super, super good. Yeah. So, like, that lost team fight for Marietta, again, it seemed like it was in their favor for a while. However, right, because the Rhine was, like, the Rhine was nano. There was the massive, there was, like, a literal massive shatter afterwards. Because the Rhine gets res, really, okay, the Rhine's res, he's by himself. He's like the man shatter, just well, they, out of nowhere. They tried to stop him. Azadel did put a grab uh, right on top of him, but he was able to dodge in the nick of time. So... That kept the Ryan up and be able to get that three man shatter. Yeah, that was that was very that was very well done. Like again, like I see him shatter, I'm like, oh I don't see uh I don't see why we shatter, and then there's just three people on the ground in front of him. Like, oh well, well that was that was very well done. There's Crow getting initial pick on a reserve that's gonna cause Mary to have to fall back a little bit. Again, it's a Lucio pick, so the Lucio's gonna be able to just 
hop off the walls and just come straight back to Mary because Mary had a pretty fast, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, however, the far is going to be hacked by herself alone at low health above. She's going to have to either go back straight to Mercy, which she does get a little bit of healing off. We're going to see Asuna get a kick onto the Hanzo. However, Mace of Spades going to get his fire strike kill into the mirror match. Cry is going to get his kill on the jungle, and then Craft's going to get his res right onto the Hanzo that was just eliminated. Mace of Spades is going to get his kill onto Asdale. It's going to be both tanks and Marietta contested a little bit, or just at least stopped for a little while. It's going to be a double kill as well onto both healers from Marietta. So I'm surprised Marietta hasn't really come up with an answer for the fairy yet, because yeah. she's actually been causing quite a few issues with the Pioneers, and the only comp change has been uh, the Sombra instead of the Genji, which is definitely better, but now we see the Ash coming out, which I think is going to be a much better yeah, choice the, to counter the Pharah. Yeah, the, the, the Sombra makes the more Sombra makes sense. You hack the far, she can't do much anymore. However, as you can see, the Sombra hacked the Farah, and she didn't die. She got hacked, she has a low health, and she sort of just sat on the bridge. And now Poseidon's like, okay, I'm just going to use Ash. I'm just going to kill him myself. I guess we need to get this 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 pharmacy out of here because she's getting too many picks off. We're going to see Mace of Spades get slept a little bit by Liana. And we're also going to see Cry just take out that... Uh, or, yeah, but take out the Torp Turb. Harmful Hades has switched to Torb. I didn't even realize that. There's going to be another shatter going down. There's going to be a two-man shatter, I believe. There's going to be a huge grab by, Z by Zarya or Azadale. Massive anti. That's going to be a, a great uh, cleanup right there. The anti, the grab, and the nano on the Rhine just uh, is a recipe for a one team fight by Marietta. Very, very well done. The anti, especially just being able to confirm the nail in the coffin that they are not going to get out of this alive. That's going to be a lost team fight. Yeah. And it looks like Marietta's finally found their footing on countering the strategy that, uh, that the Bobcats have been performing. Well, the other thing is, Brian Stratton has been relying a lot on the Fera. And once they're inside here, the is there, there's a ceiling, there's a closed space, so it's going to be a bit more difficult for Farrah to maneuver around. So that might give Marietta an edge to be able to take that, uh, keep that Farrah in check. Like that, again, there's a grab dragon, really well done. I love those alt combos to see them, and uh, we'll see that only one kill was managed by, it, but it was a Ryan kill. Harmful Hades does get the refrag onto Ryan's mirror mash on the, the Bobcat side, res right onto Cryo. We're going to see that as he's going to get killed right back on to Moira. And the Farah tries to ult, get slept out of it, immediately aim bought it by a harmful Hades turret. That's going to be a huge ult denial. The Farah was just not in a position to ult right there, and all of the abilities just came straight at her and stopped her from doing anything about it. Yeah, that actually makes the Torbjorn a very good pick there because the turret can just keep wailing on the Farah. So I think Marion has found their answer. That is very well done as well in in combination with that hit scan of uh, of poseidon it's going to be near impossible for a far to get by in there they're going to have to either switch to the comp significantly which they have done by switching to the soldier we're going to see that uh the mercy is going to use her valkyrie mode trying to get a little bit of extra heals as well as game of boost however there's going to be another massive grab from Azadale. a little sleep onto the rhine for the bobcat side Ryan does try to get a shatter off but he's being aim bought by the little turret which is going to help out a bunch in the countering the little shatter that Mace of Spades did. There's going to be a double kill from Q as well as an extra pick on to Ryan's mirror match. There we go. That's going to be a triple kill from Marietta, but Kloop's going to get actually a double kill onto both Poseidon and Granny Sonata. That is going to be a little bit in Mar not in Marietta's favor. However, in, at the end of the day, it's a one team fight. Both are pushed back. The card is not pushed. Marietta is still an advantage. Marietta now has about a minute and 21 seconds in order to keep this payload where it is. We're going to see that the Torp Turret is going to be nice and safe trying to aim bot anything that's going to by. There's going to be a Lava Mat coming out, just trying to stop anyone from getting on to the point, just keeping them away. That's going to help uh, prevent anyone from just doing anything right now, trying to push them apart. Uh, the Soldier's trying to get a little bit of extra hit scan damage from up top. As he's just pushing away a little bit. It's going to be a huge Grab Dragons. Very well done. The Grab Dragons are, are performing very well. It's one of my favorite ult combos to see. It's going to be another massive team kill by the Bobcats. So, again, the Grab Dragons is very powerful. I mean, if someone wants to consider playing it, it I mean, even though as uh, even though as is doing really good work on the Zarya, they have to figure out an answer to this. So there's going to be a massive shatter, unquestionably. However, Cryo is going to use his aimbot to get a kill on the Arthur Hades, and there's going to be Poseidon getting his refrag back on the soldier. Triple kill from Marietta, including Poseidon, actually going to be a quad kill. Azura is going to get the res right on the Arthur Hades. It's going to be another one team fight for Marietta, and a team kill back on their part. 
So two team kills just happened, one for either side. Very well done by each side. And we can see that the final map is always turning out to see, be one of these maps where it's just highly contested on either side. So we might we cool. might see a C9 attempt over here. Soldiers going back around. I don't think Mary is aware of this. Oh, never mind. Azadale was aware of it. Yep, Azadale he... made sure. And also there's a little Torb turret aimbotting, just making sure that there's anything that can stop them. There's going to be Reaper trying to get a little bit extra kill. But then hopefully he's just going to be a, get a little casual turret double kill because, you know, nothing wrong with that. We're going to see another Halo that has been halted from being able to get all three points. And that's going to be the end of that. Yeah, that's actually a very good move by Harmful Hades to put that turret right by the payload. So that way if anyone, if there was a C9 attempt, that they would have the turret to be able to stop it. And we thought, we saw that it was quite successful. That allowed Marietta to continue to push and try to keep right, trying to off the payload while the turret was able to clean up. Yeah, it's great to have that passive utility on your side. Just something that you don't even need to think about it, activate it or anything. Just throw it down and it's going to do its own job. It's going to help you out and you don't need to think about anything. And as well, and coupled with this, with a lava map being able to keep people off of point, or was a great pick for just both countering the Farah, countering C9s, just countering everything. Very, very well done on either side again. And we saw the grab dragons coming out from the bobcat side they were so so powerful they didn't necessarily get like a five-man kill from the dragons themselves but it set up so many picks that it allowed them to get so much done so we're going to see this final side right here potentially if marietta is able to push it all the way to the yeah. end then this will be three maps one and a one match for Marietta, and that'll close it out. Yeah, I mean, we saw how close Brian Strat got. So yeah, all Mary has to do is just get all three points, and that's GG. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and again, I'm very, I was very, uh, I was very happy to see that the Bobcats were able to get two points in general because they were pushing the points so close to the end, and their all combos have just been really, really powerful recently. And it looks like Mary is going to take their attempt at the pharmacy composition with uh, Poseidon on uh, the Pharah. And we'll see Azadiel on the Sigma. That's a very nice pick. I, I love seeing uh, I love seeing a Sigma every once in a while. And we're going to see Drain Sinati sticking to his on and nothing wrong with some Antis. And we're going to see the Harmful Hades going to actually be on the Soldier, potentially counter a pharmacy or just for extra hits again. It's going to be a massive anti on some. Uh, onto the Bobcats, gonna uh, capitalize on that a little bit with Poseidon getting his kill onto Cryo. And we're gonna see that there's gonna be another anti right onto the Hog. It's gonna be both tanks down. There's gonna be a triple kill for Poseidon as well as a melee kill from Azadiel finishing off the Mercy. That's gonna be... Yeah, that's that's a, that's a one team I've never seen one. With Granny Snade finishing off that Moira just to make sure. Yeah, again, that Moira at the very end of Stagger does help and gives buys Mary a little bit more time as they continue to push this payload. Yeah, again, like, they, they got they one okay. session team uh, fight. Guys, they yeah. forgot to move the payload. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's something that I saw, is that, like, there will be these these times where point, where the point just isn't moved at all. I'm like, well, although it seems like you're, it seems like I'm, I try to, like, because I've done that before, I'm like, well, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but at the same time, you know, those are precious milliseconds that are being lost. So, like, just utilizing that is, like, really, really important. It's going to be another little bit of it. The, the points still not being moved. There we go. Again, like I feel like I'm overanalyzing it, but it's uh, it's just a little um. There, like again, points picks are being taken. There's going to be a little bit of a mercy res on the queue. So like all the team fights are being won, so it's luckily not going to actually be that big of a deal for uh, Marietta. You just have to make sure that they're still being effective at a. Uh, and they're and keeping this payload on the move. They're doing a great job just buying space, pushing Brian Stratton out, and that just allows the payload just to keep free roaming. It just hasn't really slowed down. Yeah, like it just, it, again, it's going on the next corner on this bridge with a lot of environmental kill potential. potential. And we will see exactly how each team will perform for this. Uh, the Diva's trying to get a little bit of vertical play on the side, but the Sigma just counters it. We're going to see that, uh, well, not just the Sigma, but like all of the teams just realize not going to be a deal. There's going to be a, uh, a double environmental kill. Mesa Stage is, again, sacrifices himself to get rid of his mirror match. going to be both Ryan's out. There's going to be Harmful Hades getting his ult kill onto the Moira, as well as Azido getting his grab kill onto Mercy. And Harmful Hades getting his little extra ult kill onto the Diva's mech. And we're going to see that Azido is going to get an environmental kill onto, uh, onto the Ash. Or Cryo, I guess I should say. Humble Hades as well as finishing off some extra picks. It's going to be a one team fight. And we're going to see that uh, the Ryan's going to be anti. It's going to be a little scary for the back to try and counter anything. If it was if it was me, I would just give this up. It's going to be. They, they've got a, a massive advantage right now. Yeah, but at this point, though, Brian it. Stratton is near the end of the, uh, the map, so they're going to have to pop something. Because we see the, uh, the points right over here. 
So if Marina gets the payload over there, they will win this series. We are going to see the double kill from Poseidon, so that's going to be a little bit more difficult to achieve. However, Endcraft does, it is able to get the res onto his fellow healer. Poseidon just takes out the monkey at the same time. There's just too many picks, not enough to compensate. Fulip does get a little bit of a redeeming pick back on Poseidon, but there's going to be an immediate res back on Poseidon. Plus, going to be harmful. He's getting his kill on from the tree that did that killing, as well as beside, as well as you getting the kill on the mirror match. Harmful. He's getting the kill on Moira. Massive grab by the Sigma, getting a double kill on both the Mercy and the Monkey, and a triple kill onto the Ash. That's going to be the points. It's going to be the one game, and finally the match is 3-0. Marietta. That was actually a good move by Azadel, lifting them up off the payload so they can move the payload even a bit further. Yeah, I think he was trying to use that to get the win, but it stopped just short of it. But still, great decision there. Yeah, that's, that's one of those fun things that I've seen people do is they just get them off to make them C9. And that was just, that was so well done. That was, uh, that was, those were two crazy shots by Fulip, I will say. That was, that was so crazy. That was very, very well done on either side, so... Again, with that, the final score will be 3-0, Marietta. That's just uh, a crazy, crazy game. That was so much fun to enjoy. Uh, the ult combinations, the antis, the sleeps on the Farah alts, the aimbot from the Torb turret. Just the incredible stuff that has been going on in this game. It was so enjoyable to see everything, and I'm just excited for the matches in the future. And again, like, just very, very well done either side. Yep. So... That's going to be it for us temporarily. But first of all, congratulations to the Pioneers. So that's, I think, right now on a three-game winning streak. Um, so they've been doing very well. So their next match will be on Saturday against Tiffin University, which will be an interesting one because last year uh, Tiffin was Marietta's first win in Overwatch. Uh, but I think Tiffin has a much stronger team this time around, so it's going to be very interesting how that goes. But we're not done with esports for tonight. We still have our bonus game that we have unlocked because I found out about a couple hours ago. So our Rainbow Six White team will be going up against the Ohio State University uh, in about 10 minutes. So we're going to take a small break to get everything set up. And then when we come back, we will see some Rainbow Six. So don't go away. You're watching Marietta College Esports.